Keith folks and welcome to this week's episode of Art Tips with John. Uh, you can't see me right now, I'm very much aware of that. That's because I'm off camera and because this week we are painting with the canvas on the floor. And it's very, very important for me to be able to do this and to show you guys uh, obviously what we're up to and what we're doing. Um, so we've got our studio lights, we've got everything nicely lit and all ready to go. I'll move the studio lights over so as you can see it a little bit more, a little bit brighter. And we, I think, are just about ready to begin. We've got a ginormous studio light that's right here next to me. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's emitting uh, a lot of heat right now, um, which is always, uh, her, you know, hilarious. So, what we're going to do, we've got our first base layer painted in right now into our water uh, and into our land mass. What we're going to come in now with is a two inch brush, this little fella here. We're going to tap into a little bit of white paint, which is over here, again off camera so you guys can't see, but all I'm doing is just tapping in. As you can see there, we've got a nice little ridge on the uh, paintbrush and we're just going to go over. Maybe there's been a fresh snow. And we're just going to go over, and all we're doing here is just tapping, just tapping. And of course, this is Art Tips with John, where we teach you not only how to build a successful art business, but also how to unleash your creative talents. And we do that through a wide variety of measures. We've got a brand new course that's been remastered and re-released called How to Build a Successful Art Business that is available now at outreachart.org. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also check it out by clicking the link below. It covers everything from how to market your artwork, how to find the right clients, customers, how to actually get started, how to do sales, how to build your uh, own business, how to build a product line, how to deal with those difficult customers because they do exist, and so much more that's in there. There's a special offer that's on right now. I think you will thoroughly, thoroughly love this course, How to Build a Successful Art Business, available at outreachart.org and by clicking the link below. Um, and of course, if you're interested, do get in touch because we also offer coach coaching services as well. Coaching services? Coaching services um, for folks who are looking not only to build a successful art business, but who are looking maybe for that little bit more guidance in their artistic journey as well. So we're having a tremendous amount of fun this week, folks. I launched my online life coaching practice um, that I have been building up probably for the last, gosh, I've, I've actually been building up and studying now probably for the last 17, 18 years. Uh, and I am the creative coach. I am the coach for the creative mind. Um, and we specialize in working with teenagers, working with creative minds and working with youths. Um, and we have already had some phenomenal success, which was wonderful. I am not a coach that wants you to be there for six or seven months. If I can help you and I can get results in a very, very short span of time, I will, because that means that more and more people are gonna be lining up to take our creative programs because they know that they actually work. Anyway, now that I'm done rambling, and then you can see obviously what they're, what we're up to. We're just tapping in there with a little bit of white paint and that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna clean the brush off. Now, I wanna show you guys, see if I can put this in the line of camera for you. When you're cleaning your brushes, a lot of people like to clean their brushes like this, like this. You know, it's, 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 it's this tiny, teeny little thing. Well, that doesn't clean anything. You can see there, it's horrible, horrible and manky. What you need to do is get your brush right down there, bend the bristles, move them backwards and forwards, boom backwards and forwards, shake off the excess water, and then with, an, with a rag or a towel, I've got an old towel that's underneath the, the tripod now, just give it a good wipe, and there you go, you've got a nice clean brush. Make sure to clean the metal as well, so as no rust sets in, and that's really important that you do that. Okay, so let's come in here. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we went rolling with the camera about putting together a Native American painting and I think that's what we're going to do with this one. So we're going to come in with a little bit of black paint, a little bit of water, roll it into a little bit of black paint. Obviously, as I've said before, if you're using oil paint, you're going to want to use turpentine and thinner, uh, ideally odorless um, because it will uh, make a big difference to the smell of your house. 
Um, for anybody that's ever used white spirits and turpentine, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It is pungent and really, really strong. Um, if you are using uh, oil, uh, well, what we're using, we're using acrylic paint. Um, if you're using acrylic paint, you're going to tap into a little bit of water and then into your black paint. Make sure it flows really, really well, nice and slick and ready, ready to go. And that's really what you're after and what you're wanting more than anything else. So we're going to come in. And we're going to take our little brush here. Now we're going to start putting away some distant, distant, um, maybe teepees and things where the Native Americans uh, would reside. And all we're going to do is literally block in with a little bit of black paint. And we're just going to put these in now. Now you may say, well, John, that doesn't really look like a teepee. Well, it will. And we're going to put a few in. And I want to show you this. And I'm going to show you one that I've been working on that's, that's a little bit drier. So as you can see what it will look like. Okay, we're going to put a few in here, and then a few, and you can vary the sizes, of course, of course, the, the further away they are, the smaller they'll be, the closer they are, the bigger they will be. Okay, and obviously I'm using uh, a variety of brushes here, you use what, whatever you've got available to you. Okay, and we're going to come in with a little bit of, a little bit more water. And here, just going to put in one. And the, the thing that helps a painting sell, I'll give you this, this little tip. The things that help the painting sells is obviously when you are able to connect with your audience, but also you're able to tell a story through your artwork. People love not only to watch paintings being done, but to see and hear the stories of a painting. What inspires the, the artist, for example, to to do the painting or the author to, to, to write that book and write those words and put those words in a specific order and everything. Um, or the musician to, to sing the song. And obviously I've got skills in all of those areas. So, um, but sometimes it's just the emotion that's there. It's the feeling and the connectivity. And we're getting smaller and smaller the further on away we go. Okay, and then over here. Maybe just a little bit of highlight here and there. Just something really nice and sweet. So you can see there what we've got going on. I'm going to show you a painting exclusive now. Here's a world exclusive, folks, that I have been working on. It's not finished, but it'll give you an indication. So we've painted the base color on here. Now, when I put that, let me make sure I can get that so it's not too glary. So when I put that down now, you can start to see what happens when you paint the colors on top is that you're starting to get that beautiful, beautiful color. And that's why you need the base coat. It's really, really important that you've got the base coat on because if you don't have the base coat on, you can actually um, really see and appreciate the colors when you paint them on top. So it's really important that you've got that beautiful, beautiful base coat that's on there and you develop that on in. Okay, we're gonna come in, a little bit of water, a little bit of black, and I'm gonna put in a, a big old Big one over here. Okay, and again, don't worry about painting over anything. It's all fine. We know it's there. And we just literally, you can see here, I'm just literally pulling down. Once you learn the basics to how to create these paintings, how to pull them in, how to create the shapes and everything that you need, you'll find that a lot of things are very, very similar. Okay, we're going to clean the brush off. Now I'm going to come in with a long haired liner brush, which is this little fella here. We're going to tap into a little bit of water. Come in with a little bit of black paint. I normally do three parts water to, uh, to the paint. Water paint, water paint, water paint. Make sure it's nice and wet. And then we're going to come up in here. And we're going to start putting in the, the sticks and the twigs and all the, the things that are holding the the homes up. Okay, and obviously again, the further away they are, the smaller they're going to be. And this is the this is the fun part. This is the detail when you start putting all this stuff in. And all we're doing here is just flicking up, flicking on out, and just working all of that stuff in. Just little lifts. 
and we're lifting up. That's very, very important that you've got those upward lifts because it ends. It, what, what it means is you end up with that really sharp point um, on the top, which is really what you're wanting more than anything. And we're going to come in over here and do the same. And we're just lifting up, just lifting up. Okay, now because we've got trees there, what we might want to do is come in with a little bit of white just to create some, there we go, some separation. And just lifting them on up. Just something like that. Just something nice and sweet like that. So we've got a nice base coat that's down here. I want to show you how to paint 3D effects into your artwork now. And it's very, very simple to do. It's all about dimensions. So what we've got in, in the, the plane of the land, I want you to imagine almost like a square. You've got areas that go along the top and then areas that come down the side and then areas that come along the bottom and then areas that go elsewhere. And in this case, we have areas of land that go across. And when you want to paint these little... 3D effects, like maybe a little cliff face or something, or a little, little drop into the water to make it more 3D, we're going to paint them straight down. And I'll explain and I'll show you now. Let's come in with a little bit of white, a little bit of black, black on one side of your brush, white on the other, two-tone technique, white on one side, black on the other, white, black, white, black. Okay. And we're going to come in, and let's see maybe over here, we're just going to come in and pull on down. We're going to shape. We're going to shape the land. And you see that I'm just pulling straight down. And what that does, that makes the water look much deeper than it actually is, but it also creates a lot of separation. Pulling straight down, 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 Pulling straight down, just something nice. And what, what ideally it wants to do, if you imagine your perspective, if you, if you were obviously doing this class with us right at the beginning, so your perspective starts in the middle and then it comes on out the way. It's important obviously to do the exact same technique with this. So you start here, go shallow, and then down here will be much further um, down in your paint. So let, let me show you by demonstration. So if we start here, for example, and we've got that little line there that keeps it all in perspective. You're going to pull straight down to there and then over here. Okay, and then at the bottom, you're just going to blend it on out just to take away any of those harsh edges. Any of those harsh edges, just blend it on out. And all we're doing is pulling down. And it's only in the areas that it's visible. So I wouldn't do it here, for example, because the bank is actually underneath this snowfall. But here, you can see it quite obviously. And we're just pulling straight down. Da, 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 down. And then just blending these things on out. And obviously that's what gives you the shadow, something really nice and simple like that. It's not too complicated once you get it, but it's just getting the angles right. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing, just getting those little angles right and building that on in. And then we're going to do some over here, just pull straight down. Just pull straight down and then again, blend on out. And we've created there a beautiful little uh, 3D style effect that we've got. But one more that I want to do, which is over here. This one might be a bit smaller, maybe a bit, a bit shallower, perhaps. And then just pulling straight down. But Native American spirituality has always been something that I've connected with very, very deeply. You know, the, the respect for the land and the respect for the animals and, the, you know, it comes down to a lot of respect and that connectivity with, with God and with creation and, and everything that's there. It's been something that's always, always just been amazing uh, to, to behold in my own life and, and, uh, and to share in as well. 
Uh, and again, we're not talking this sort of religion or anything like that, but we're talking that connection with creation. Okay, so we're going to come in, a little bit of white paint, small amounts, small amounts. We're going to start developing the mountains up a little bit more now. And again, very, very lightly, you can see here, I'm hardly touching the brush. And we're just pulling on around. And it's actually, this, this technique works a lot better if you've got a, a dry, stiff brush. And it's the, le the least amount of paint that you use the more mountainous it ends up looking. Of course, you can also do this with a palette knife as well, which is techniques that we've looked at before. And I'm going to take a little bit of black, a little bit of a little bit more green there. A tiny touch more. And then just working it. Working around, this is where you start to build your mountains. This is where you start to build. And again, you've got to decide, are they close mountains or are they mountains that are way, 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 away in the distance? And if the mountains are way, away in the distance, then, you know, they're not going to be too much detail on there. And just build them on around. Build them on. Pulling all these lovely little things in there. Just playing around with them. Okay. I think we need maybe a little bit of a, a bridge or a connection or something somewhere. Maybe maybe a an old rock or something that's there. Let's come in. A little bit of black, a little bit of white, black on one side of brush, white on the other. And let's put in, you know, an old, an old bridge, perhaps. Yeah, something like that. Ways for people to get across. Again, like I say, there's nothing wrong with playing around with ideas. Nothing wrong at all with playing around with ideas. Because when you create your imagination, when you allow, when you let your imagination go wild, you can create some amazing, amazing things. Some great playful little ideas that before you know it, end up just being absolutely wonderful. We create our world by the thoughts that we allow in there. We create our thoughts, our thoughts create our feelings, our feelings create our intentions which lead to our actions. And we're just tapping in, building this on in. And this will probably be the last thing that we've got time for in today's show because we need to let things dry of course. I wanted to show you how to put this together and then we'll look at some of the questions if folks are watching this on Facebook and of course folks if you're watching this on YouTube don't forget to like share and subscribe you can of course ask me any questions and things and I'm always always here to help but we've got to let this dry that's very very important and then and put all the final touches in and things next time. Just put final little bits in there for now. Then all of this has got to dry. That's, that's the fun part about it. So you'll get to see it, obviously, when it's dry. Well, folks on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Art Tips with John. Don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Tell us that you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions for us, of course, do get in touch. And if you want to check out more courses like this, head to outreachart.org. And uh, we've got some awesome ones up there for intermediates, for beginners, for advanced, and even for those who want to build their successful art business. And I have been your host, John Morris. This has been Art Tips with John. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care. And God bless. Have you ever wanted to build a successful art business but have no idea where to begin? 
Have you ever wanted to make money with your creative skills, but the whole process seems too big and just too overwhelming? It can be for sure. But then that all depends if you know of an artist who has done it and who is willing to teach you. Hi folks, I'm John Morris, and for the last two decades I've been building not one successful art business, but four successful art businesses, where my work is literally sold all over the world and all without a formal art education. I've done it, I continue to do it, and now I want to help you do it too. With the Business Builder for the Creative Mind, you are going to learn what they don't teach you in school. In this six day course, you're going to learn how to get started with what you have and where you're at, how to market yourself, how to sell, how to present yourself and your artwork to an audience, how to find your audience and your special niche, how to write emails, how to write sales copy, how to do an ad pitch, how to take advantage of social media to reach more people than you ever thought possible and so much more in this course. We've got it jam-packed and over six sessions that ideally you'll do over six days. This course has been a game changer for many around the world and I'm sure it can be for you. The only difference between those who succeed and those who don't is the education and mindset that we feed ourselves. So stop throwing your money away and start building the business of your dreams. You'd be really glad you did. Click the link below and I'll see you in class.